I just did an interview with Gator, who, by the way, you did an amazing interview. But Sorry, I told, Gator. I shared, I shared with Gator that Dave is the reason that my show is not on TV. You know, at the same time that Dave was pitching his show for FX, I had a, I had a deal. They call me Search was going to be a TV show about this white rapper in Queens who was coming up, who was the Forrest Gump of hip hop in the eighties, mm. and my show got dropped. And I, no, no tea, no shade, like it is because what it is. Because of Dave, yeah, because of Dave. Because they thought Dave was just better and similar, and he is because I got forty thousand followers. He's got forty million. So mm. on the on the level of that, it's like yo, I don't, we don't give a fuck about a Search. He got Scooter Braun. He got fucking forty million followers. Mm. This shit makes sense. And let's be really fucking clear. That show is fucking amazing. Like, really? I would never have been able to make a show as good as that. Like, Dave's show, by far, is the best. It's, it's the Seinfeld of hip-hop. Yeah. Like, it's just a fucking amazing show. Yeah. And I told Gator that when I did my interview on Search Says on my podcast. And, again, I, what he has done in the medium of television is the same thing that I think that he's done in terms of the medium of making music. Like, he's just created a lane that is uniquely his right mm. and even though my lane was very uniquely mine before you were born it's still one of those things where it's like so what who cares and i'm okay with that like i think there's a lot of like curmudgeon ogs that are like ah oh, you know y'all motherfuckers don't realize how hard it was yo fuck all that like if I'm not flexible enough to like recognize that I need to continue to create relevancy not even for myself as a brand, but relevancy for the stories that I was a witness to and stories that I was a part of. It's not about me. Mm. It's about the things that I was around. Like, so doing the podcast on Big Daddy Kane, right? Like our first, did I ever tell you the one about podcast? Right. Did I ever tell you the one about Big Daddy Kane? Dude, we spent two years meeting with eardrum companies. And, you know, and when I say eardrum, I'm talking about ear doctors about how the inner ear hear sound like we met with all these fucking companies about how the drivers work in fucking headphones we were thinking about immersive sound design three years ago way mm. before fucking apple now was doing commercials about that shit right we were meeting with dobe atmo so our entire first season of big daddy kane is all immersive sound design mm -hmm. we're talking about growing up on gates avenue and going to fucking play ball we went, we sent a sound team to fucking record that fucking park so that that's how it felt. Hmm. Whether you fucking feel that shit or not is on you, but that's what we did. And now doing the one, you know, the podcast on Doom, you know, uh, the identity of that is not about like my relationship with MF Doom. It's my relationship with Daniel Dumoulay, who I grew up with in Long Beach, who before any of y'all knew Doom, the mad villain and... He was Daniel Dumoulay, him and his brother. He, he's the reason I had a high top fade. He's the reason I had third base cut in the back of my head. You know, he's the, he's the reason that when I got on, I had a purpose. So when I was like, okay, when I get on, y'all get on. You know, when GYP was that, was, that was my mission after third base. Like the back of the third base album is in my man's basement in, in Long Beach. You know what I'm saying? So telling those stories and being about that part of the culture for me it's not about me i don't have to be a curmudgeon and worry about oh fuck i've only got 40 i don't give a fuck how many fucking followers i have right it's irrelevant so when dave did what his th his thing i was so happy to see someone be able to tell their story based on what they built today mm. and it just makes me say that you know okay i have to be able to tell my stories i have to figure out a way to share my experiences without being it egocentric and being self-centered right yeah when did that you know because we talk about every person becoming a media company you know you've taken on a lot more there by just deciding that you wanted to go in the you know the the path of doing podcasts about all these different people that you've been around and stuff like when did that sort of uh switch get flipped in your head that you could really tell some amazing stories through this medium and did you think about doing like you know documentaries like you know i was talking to uh big you about him choosing to do um like all this tv stuff and everything it occurred to me that like he could have done a podcast he could have done a series of tiktoks you know there there's so many different ways that you could tell these stories like what made you land on deciding to do these sort of like fully fleshed out uh immersive podcasts so it wasn't just one thing 
Mm-hmm. Right. It, it goes back to what I'm saying. It's not only it's not the strong who survives. It's the flexible. We started a media company. Mm-hmm. Um, and that identity was we'll do documentaries, we'll do films, we'll do whatever. We'll go wherever we, we fit. Um, but there was something interesting with, for me about six years ago in the podcast space where I just didn't see my stories and the stories that I was around really being told in a way that I cared about. Mm. And I'm from that, right? Like I didn't hear the storytellers um, doing it in a way that was compelling to me. Mm. And then, you know, Nori about two years later, EFN and Nori did drink champs. And I was like, Oh good for Nori. Mm. Cause when I was taking Nori on the road, I was working his record. You know, I broke, Super Thug, like I worked that record. And it was amazing that I would take him to radio stations and people would come to him after. And it wasn't the fans, it was the fucking program director saying, hey, was he interested in doing radio? Mm. Like, is he interested in doing the morning show? Like, he was such a great storyteller. People were so compelled by that. And that was what was happening to me when I was going on the road. People would come up to me, program directors, oh, are you interested in doing radio? And that's how I got started. I, I was the first non-African American to ever host WJLB's radio show, which is the most legendary urban station in the country. Mm. So it was always about storytelling. You know, it was always about telling those stories. And I had a program director tell me, like, you can only be MC Search and third base on the morning show for three months. Mm. It's going to get to a point where you're going to have to tell something else. You're going to have to say something else. There's only so many times you can talk about yourself mm. until you have to start telling other stories. And that was kind of the ethos of how I thought about it in creating a media company with my wife. So we just just totally went into it saying we're going to be totally flexible. We're going to take every meeting. We're going to see where we land. And where we land the biggest was the Orchard. And, and Brad, Navin, and those guys were like, yo, we're bullish on you. We want you to tell your story. We want you to be able to like share your experience and what you, did, you know, saw and heard and I said, yeah, but I, I really need to do it in a way that's not being done. Mm. Um, because the immersive sound design was always a part of it for me. Like, you know, our artists, and not even just Kane or the artists here, you know, but G-Rap and, you know, Brand Nubian, like their stories haven't really been told in a way that I think they deserve, mm. right? So in that space, yeah, you can do it in a really cool way in documentary and you can shoot the beautiful shots of the Bronx and you can shoot Tats crew pieces and all of that, but how much doper is it to hear their voice and then match that voice with an amazing sound design that you don't even mm. expect, right? So I was like, that's that's kind of fucking dope, right? Um, and it's still the Wild West because, you know, I'm sure Big U, the reason he did TV is there's money in TV, mm. You know, and there's no money in podcasting yet. Nobody really understands how to monetize it, right? Like audience is one part, CRM is another part. And I don't want to get too deep in the weeds and fucking make people click out. Mm. But the way, you know, we think about podcasts is like, okay, how do we tell an amazing story? Like, how do we compel kids to listen to Big Daddy Kane and talk about him being a stick-up kid in Brooklyn? Mm. Well, we hit a click, click of a fucking gun and behind somebody's head. You know, and have him tell this story from a narrative that's one to one, right? So that was really, really cool with me. And then, you know, that kind of expanded. Like, so I've been in recovery now 10 years, like I haven't used. So I was like, okay, well, it's got to be amazing people that have amazing stories about their recovery. Mm. So we're building this entire immersive sound design show called Breaking Anonymity, which debuts in September, September 22nd. We talked to Brandon Novak, you know, about his fucking recovery. Danny Boy from House of Pain, Royce of Five Nine, Ken Crooked. You know, we talked to these amazing people. Frank Gallagher, who's the fifth talking head. Like, people who are fucking amazing and have these amazing stories about how they hit rock bottom. Danny Boy talking about having the biggest record in the world living fucking under a, a fucking underpass. You know, but how does that sound? Like, when you're smoking good and you're in the car and then all of a sudden you fucking hear that story... Okay, it's one thing to hear the audio of it, but it, it's amazing to hear how we fucking built it. Mm. You know, and sitting in Adobe Atmos studio and fucking knowing like when you're in your car or when you are you got your headphones and the drivers are fucking sounding crazy, you're like, oh shit, this story's even better because of the immersive sound design. And that to me was just, that was the linchpin. Mm. And it wasn't even about money, bro. It wasn't, it, fuck money. It's not about money. Like I'm at a place in my career, thank goodness, where... I don't chase a dollar. I chase opportunity. 